Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about the new optical disc that keeps getting mentioned. It apparently holds like 1.6 petabytes and it's got like this 3D technology that means that most of this collection could be housed on like one disc instead of multiple. And I keep hearing all these YouTubers talk about how it's going to be the future, how if this catches on it's going to revolutionize the industry. The reality is that Organizations are already moving away from um, optical media, Blu-rays, DVDs, so forth. Organizations like Sony, like Xbox, like Panasonic, who make my Blu-ray player, the UB820, they're moving away from developing this technology. Now, obviously, UB820 is still around for a while. Nobody's cancelling that. But I'm saying, like... Organizations see that Blu-ray players are not selling. And yes, the argument is that everything was on streaming now. Why would they invest in making new Blu-ray players? And I admit, this is a niche. Like, Blu-ray is a niche. But the dilemma is that... Look, 4K hasn't even really taken off. And yes, I'm an avid 4K collector. As you can see, I've got a lot of 4K in my collection. And yeah, I've got horror over here as well. But... Yes, I'm an avid 4K collector, and I'll admit it hasn't really taken off to the same scale as Blu-ray, or to the same scale as even DVD. Like, DVD is still the dominant format in physical media, and there is a reason for it. A, it's cheaper. B, it's also much more accessible. Like, there are movies that, even these days, you would expect them to get a Blu-ray or DVD, a Blu-ray or 4K release, and they're still coming out on DVD and... It makes it more accessible because most people are looking for an option if they like the movie they'll watch it on streaming these days or watch it in a cinema and then they'll say oh cool that was a cool movie i want to own that one or i want to have that in my collection or they really enjoyed it they were a fan of the movie that's typically what what the average uh, not non-collector like the um the average person would do if they liked the movie but there's a dilemma of like Collectors are the only ones going out buying big like this and buying Blu-ray players and buying the UBA20 and buying the top-end Pioneer players and whatever else. The average consumer is just going to use their, their Xbox or PlayStation and those guys are using out physical media as well. So when people say, oh, there's a 1.6 petabyte disc coming out and it's going to be able to hold like everything on like this whole bookcase, it'll be able to hold the whole bookcase full of it on one disc. Well, A, what if the disc gets scratched? I'm just saying, it's it can happen. You're going to lose access to basically half your collection if the disc gets scratched. Also, you know, media rights deals, a lot of networks don't play. But it would be cool if you could own, like, the whole Sony back catalogue or something on one disc. That would be pretty cool. But where I see the new disc going is... um, It'll be, like, something to house, like archives of Facebook or archives of YouTube or archives of something. It would be, think about it this way. I, th I see it more as a business contract as like, okay, YouTube are running out of service space. If they can house like 15 different hard drives onto one disc and you want to keep those, obviously if you need to erase them, that's going to become a problem. But I could see something like the content of YouTube, certain Certain um, content creators, they could theoretically um, write that to a like a disc. If it's rewritable, I don't know if it's rewritable, and this is what we don't know. We don't know enough about these new discs. And also, think about the cost of these discs. 4K is it's been around for a couple of years now, and it's only at that price point now where the average consumer can justify buying a 4K copy over a Blu-ray or a DVD. And even then, it's like, what, 1.6% of the market, 1.8, whatever it is. It's somewhere around, one. last time I looked, it was around 1.6 or 1. Point, it was around, like, the 1 point whatever, at the top 1.8 or something. But that is how many people are adopting 4K. People, I think this Blu-ray was still doing about 4.6. And then you look at DVD, and DVD was, last time I looked, and this was years ago, that was still pulling in about, what, 16, 20%? Like, DVD is, DVD is still around. DVD is still killing it. And in terms of the physical media market, 
a lot more people who are collectors can justify, oh, okay, cool, I just want to own the movie. I don't really care how it looks. It's just like a collector's item in case I want to watch it when I'm on a car trip or when I'm out or when I'm what whatever. So I don't think the, the 1.6 or whatever, 2,000 gigabytes or whatever it is disc they're coming out with, I don't think that will save physical media. I definitely think it has a chance to evolve um, business and service based for like YouTube and stuff like that. Or even like maybe the Disney catalog, the Disney catalog access to Disney plus might become a lot cheaper if it's all housed on like multiple discs that can hold all this data and maybe that's how it goes. There's still organizations using tape. Tape is still in the conversation because tape holds a lot more information than hard drives at in some instances. So you have to think how practical is a disc that holds 1.6 petabytes? Obviously, look, you could hold certain, it could have certain contracts, and don't get me wrong. But the thing is, I don't think physical media is going to survive that long. And don't get me wrong, physical media is going to survive as long as us collectors are buying it. Arrow video is still going to print or whatever. You know, we're still going to have stuff, stuff coming out that we can buy. I just don't see how they'll take advantage of it or how it will even become practical. I mean, you'd have to buy a new player. You'd have to convince the market, hey, you need this new disc. And they're barely doing it with 4K. It's like, and to an extent, if they say, oh, well, we can put it uncompressed, a direct um, scanning of the film reel, we can put that directly onto the disc. And, you know, you can probably hold, hold a couple of uh, dozen movies on there. I don't even think that would sell it, to be honest. I don't see how it would be justified to pay, to adopt a new format. And this is the same with 8K, because 8K Blu-ray isn't a thing yet. And I don't think 8K will become a thing because 4K isn't even selling. People don't want 4K. And there's always that mentality of we'll get to 8K and they'll come out with 16K. So I think this is the uh, swan song of physical media. 4K is really where it's gonna go. I, I can't see people adopting that over a streaming option. Now, there may be instances of where um, a disc could hold, like the whole MCU, for example, and I could see a contract or something done by Disney or Sony or whoever's printing Disney's content now, Marvel's. I could see a deal being made where it's like, oh, you'll get the whole catalog of Disney or you'll get the whole catalog of MCU and Marvel. I could see a deal like that happening on this new disc and then trying to convince the masses, hey, if you have this new disc, you can put it in a player if you have one and it'll work. The problem is we're not going to really, what sort of player? I mean, yes, I would probably buy a new player if it was, and this is the thing. We've saw new, we saw new technology like Samsung's The Wall, where it's like, oh, I can take up everything. And it's like $200,000 to buy that one. And it's like, cool, yeah, innovative technology, great. But the technology is A, kind of outdated. And look, I'm not saying Blu-ray is outdated. A lot of my fans buy this like I do. But I'll admit, this isn't streaming. And a lot of people are moving towards streaming. And for a lot of people, they don't really care that it's, oh, I can hold my whole TV show on this. They're not going to run out and buy the UB820. They're not going to run out and buy a disk drive. They're just going to say, oh, can I watch it on my computer? And that's where we're at with physical media. And while I choose to collect this way, and I would choose to look at this new 200 gigabyte disc if it became a movie format, I just don't see the practical applications. If, look, and this is the last time, I, don't, I haven't checked the stats today, but the last time I checked 4K Blu-ray, it was at 1.6 to 1.8, somewhere around that of the market. If they can't even convince people to go to 4K Blu-ray from Blu-ray or DVD, how are they gonna convince people to say, hey, you know, we've got this new uh, 1.6 petabyte disc. Uh, we're going to house the whole of Star Trek on it or whatever. And yeah, the Trekkies will buy it. <laughs> but I don't see how it's practical to convince the market. The market will not adopt it. It is just too hard. People won't be able to justify it. And yes, it's a new technology, so there will be a cost associated. When I first started collecting 4K Blu-ray, it was greatly expensive. Now, obviously, it's come down in price because as more people have adopted it, more people have gotten into it. It has become cheaper to produce. There are a lot more prints coming out. People know there's a certain price point, the sweet spot. 
But look, the reality is that we're on the last days of physical media in terms of support. And yes, physical media will still be around, but you will need to go out of your way to buy like the UBA20 or if uh, Panasonic stopped manufacturing that, then you'll need to go and find another player that does the same job. You may have to even go with an Xbox or a PlayStation eventually, which it's built into the, play, the PlayStation and Xbox right now. But what happens with PlayStation 6 when it's no longer in the console or they've went completely digital and want you to play um, online or want you to play off the streaming cloud or whatever. There is, this is the final days of Blu-ray and final days of physical media in terms of widespread availability. And yes, it will become more niche. I'm not saying it's going to die. Because everyone, I've, I've, every other YouTuber is saying, it's dying, it's going, it's going away. It's not going away. We still have our niche labels like Kino Lorber and Arrow Video and whoever else, Screen Factory. We still have all these niche labels, Criterion. It, and Sony is even backing it really big. Sony are making a lot of money on physical media. They are. That's why they're not in the streaming game. They understand their catalog's worth and are not ruling out any avenue to make money. They are smart. They're doing it the smart way. But we're in the final days of widespread availability. Like you walk into a JB Hi-Fi and you can see a whole section of it. JB Hi-Fi will probably carry it for a while. It does good numbers for JB, I believe. But, you know, in America, Best Buy or I don't remember if it was Best Buy or Walmart, they've recently announced they're getting rid of physical media or like severely cutting down on physical media. And everyone's freaking out like, oh, it's the end of physical media. It's like, no, it can still be available elsewhere, but it's just... It takes away a bit of that availability. So we're we're combating that. Physical media is currently combating streaming. And I don't see how a new disc is going to help. And let me say, streaming person over here. This is streaming person. Let's, where is, where's streaming person? Goku is streaming person. This is, this is streaming person. This guy is just like, okay, I just want to watch it all on the stream. I just want it all on the cloud. I don't care about that over there, you know? <sighs> this is terrible. This is going to be so cringeworthy. <laughs> But then you have over here, you have this magical dragon and you have to collect all seven Dragon Balls. Just think of these of physical media formats, all these little Dragon Balls here. Well, now you have, you have VHS if you want to watch the old horror movies because people prefer that way. You have DVD. You have Laserdisc in there as well. You have Betamax. You have HD DVD. You've got Blu-ray. You have 4K. And then eventually you're going to start over here and go, okay, now you've got Super HD and 8K and all this other stuff. And it's like, to the collector over here, they're just going to say, I just want to watch my movies and I want to do it as cheaply as possible. I don't really want to buy a new player to have to experience uh, Dragon Ball Z, you know? And Goku just came out of place. I knew this was a mistake to pick up Goku. Anyways, there's Goku. <laughs> yeah, so what I'm saying is, that, that was a cringe part, sorry. I, I know that was completely cringe. I just wanted to display my fact. The average consumer is not going to sit there and be like, oh, cool, 1.6 petabytes, I can... I can watch all the Bewitched on one disc. Cool, but nobody's going to be adopting it. And even me, I'll, I have 4K. I've invested in 4K, but even I've said, in the past, I've said, I think 4K is where it's going to end. I think this is the swan song. This is it. This is, we were lucky to get a 4K because they could have very easily just said, okay, Blu-ray, like Blu-ray is the peak. And Blu-ray is still coming out. They could have even set it after DVD, but DVD, obviously, people had HD DVD. People had HD TVs, and Sony was backing Blu-ray hugely back in the day, before streaming really became a thing. So Blu-ray caught on. 4K now, you can kind of get 4K streams on the internet, and a lot of people aren't going to go out and say, okay, I need a 1.6 petabyte disc. I'm not saying it doesn't have pra practical applications. I'm just saying that in the physical media space, I can't see where it has a place. And you can say 8K. Well, look, if it can house a IMAX movie uncompressed, there's an argument to be made. But then you have the whole argument of, okay, when I'm talking about practical applications, a disc like that could be housed by like a uh, Hoyts or a Event Cinemas or what's over in America. Um, do you, I don't know what your cinemas are called over there, guys. Um, AMC. I know there's AMC theaters. Well, this might be a practical application to say, hey, we can ship you the whole movie uncompressed, like uncompressed Oppenheimer or something, or uncompressed Titanic, or uncompressed Gone with the Wind, or uncompressed something, uncompressed uh, Interstellar. 
they can send the disc out like that in a 3D application and I could see a practical market of like a cinema will pay $100,000 and they'll have that disc that will work and there'll numerous screenings. I could see that being a practical application. I could also see the streamers like uh, YouTube or Disney Plus or something employing housing their whole back catalogue of movies on one disc. I could see that happening too. I just can't see it happening with consumers. I can't see it replacing 4K. I can't see it replacing Blu-ray. I can't even see it really taking hold. If 4K can't crack the market, this new disc is not going to either. And that is where I stand on the new disc because while it is cool, it's cool to see them, like people still developing new formats that can house bigger, more, um, bigger content catalogs. But uh, I just don't see how it's practical for the consumer. It costs will be insane. The market won't adopt it. And don't don't get me wrong, there'll be collectors like me who'll be like, okay, what's the cost? Like, if I'm going to pay 50 grand for a player and 100 grand for the disc, I'm not going to care. And that's where we're at right now. And if they can do it for cheap enough, I'm sure there'll be enough adopters, but then you have the whole dilemma of, okay, well, what if your disc gets scratched? And also, what happens if it's the newer cuts? Like, as I've said many times, like in previous videos, Terminator 2, I don't like the cut of Terminator 2 at the moment, the 4K cut. What if I want to go back to a previous format? I've got Blu-ray there. And look, I am ranting on a bit, but I prefer this method behind me. And it also safeguards my collection. And in a way, it's like I can, I can understand having this. This is justifiable. But when it's all one disc and you have to buy a new player to play that one disc or two, three discs, and they're talking about housing whole series on these things. Okay, so you might have 10 or 20 of these things. I can't really see people going out buying a player for anything less, like going out and adopting a new format for one or two discs that they may just want when it's available on streaming. And that's where I see this new format coming in. I do not see it as anything more than good publicity and business contracts. So like if someone wants to house all their service based on one disc or a backup of their servers, I can see that as being a practical application. I just can't see it replacing what's currently already there and the consumer adopting it as like this whole new format that must be adopted. Like with 4K even now, as I've said many times in this video, they're having trouble getting 4K to the masses and I love it. I'm an, I'm, I'm an adopter of it. I love 4K. But I know that the consumer doesn't actually care. They can't, most people in that space are saying like they can't see the difference between a Blu-ray and a 4K. That's where we're at right now. And if they put 8K on a disc, it'll be the same thing. Where's the practical application? I'm going to stop there because I'm ranting. But this is just how I felt about the new disc. Tell me how you feel in my comments, how you feel about the new disc. Are you going to, be adopt, are you going to adopt this new disc if it becomes the new format? Are you going to move to 16K resolution on these discs or 8K resolution or whole TV shows? Are you going to go out and buy a player if they say, hey, you need a new player and it's going to be, it's going to read 3D technology of this new disc. Are you going to run out and buy it? Anyways, tell me in the comments, like, subscribe, write a comment, notify. Tell me why you love collecting physical media. Or if you don't, tell me why you love streaming. Tell me why you love, well, don't tell me why you love the other thing. I don't want to hear the Jolly Roger, but hey, I'll read, I'll read your comments anyway. I don't care. I read, I go through all the comments. My channel is growing pretty fast, so I don't have a chance to read every single comment, but I am constantly re like glancing at the comments and I'll go through and just like little things I like. You won't know, you won't know I'm there, but I am reading them. Don't trust me. I'm in my comments. I do read the comments. So yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. I am glad you've watched me for this long. I'm sorry I went on a off on a bit of rant and tried to do the Goku thing. But even Goku, yeah, even Goku knows that, yeah, physical media, it stays a number, but people like me are trying to keep it alive as long as possible. But even we know streaming has essentially won. Anyways. Ain't that right, Goku? Yeah. <laughs> this is such a stupid sign off. Anyways, I'm gonna I'm ending it there. We're we're just ranting on at this point. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Peace.